Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Cisco Chat Live. I'm Stephanie Garafa, Social Media Manager for Learning at Cisco, and guest moderator for this week's chat called Build Your Career, CCNA Certification to Net Dev Ops. Before we get started, a reminder, we'll be taking your questions at the end of the show. Use the Cisco Chat hashtag on Twitter or post your question in the comments if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. OK, so joining us today is distinguished customer experience engineer Joe Clark. He's been an integral part of our engineering team for over 20 years, holds a CCIE, and is a champion of network programmability and automation, as well as a contributor for the Internet Engineering Task Force and a regular speaker at Cisco Live. Thank you so much for joining us, Joe. Thanks for having me again. I had a great time last time. Me too. So me too. I'm excited to get going. Great. Let's jump in. Okay, our first question. We announced major changes to the Cisco certification portfolio last week. And for those who are just starting to take interest in the new program, can you tell us what's changed about the CCNA, the associate level certification? Sure, we, um, for up until February 24th of this year, we had 10 CCNA certifications. And we, a couple of years ago, took a step back and we, we, we talked to some internal experts, some external experts, people in the industry, some of our, our advisory board, and we said, what is it you're really looking for in this associate level engineer? And what we got back was they wanted someone who was uh, kind of more malleable in the organization, had a broader familiarity with networking concepts like the, the core routing and switching, but also security was critical, uh, wireless, can't really have a, a network these days without wireless, and some introduction, some fundamentals around programming and automation for that network. Because these days, you're finding that in order to do things at scale and, and reliably, you need that automation. So they wanted that associate level engineer to have that nice well-roundedness and be able to pivot and do different things or, or work in different aspects of the network on network uh, engineering teams. And so that's what prompted us to go back retool, come up with a new CCNA, a brand new uh, single exam uh, CCNA certification that met all of those, uh, all of those um, uh, desired uh, outcomes or met th those, those goals for that individual. Um, and we wanted to, to re again, reinforce that, that upbringing of software into the network engineer fold. Great. And one of the biggest changes has been the introduction of Cisco DevNet certifications. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us why the Cisco portfolio expanded to include those? Sure. Uh, just like with the CCNA, with kind of creating that, that malleable, that broad network uh, engineer at the associate level, we said it's not just at the associate level they need to start having software skills. They need to have that beginning familiarity there. But that needs to permeate into our, our entire certification portfolio. We, we needed to do it at the right level throughout. And so again, back two or so years ago when we started, we made a conscious decision that we wanted software skills everywhere, in the NP, at the IE. When we created these concentrations at the NP, we wanted, as they go deep within, say, routing, switching, or wireless design, what elements of software fit there? And we then reached out and started to partner with DevNet, who was very excited to, to work with us to, to fold in a really um, uh, intense but also very comprehensive software uh, paradigm into our certifications. And that's what then led to a whole set of certifications around DevNet. Because what we also saw was not just that network engineer needed to have software skills. There was a new job role out there around a software developer who's building applications on top of the network. That job role needed to be recognized, and we wanted to kind of shepherd that new role or that, that emerging role uh, into the workplace, into the industry. And we said, we want to create these DevNet certifications that really focus more towards the software developer who's getting to be, who's integrating more uh, with Cisco solutions and specifically with the network. Um, so that's why we have both that realm around the network engineer and folding software in there, as well as that whole dedicated realm around the DevNet certifications and that software developer as well. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I mean, for software developers, DevNet certifications make sense. Mm -hmm. um, but how, how do those skills complement network engineer, engineering methodologies? Sure. So take, for example, um, me. Good enough to <laughs> talk about myself. Um, 
I have done uh, network management was where I came up with uh, came up through in Cisco. I've been here about twenty or so years, like you said, um, and so. But I had to, obviously, as network management, I didn't know about the networks I was trying to manage. So I had to learn the routing and the switching, and that's when I started to follow that CCIE route switch path. Um, and as I developed more knowledge around there, I started doing the configuration of the, the switching elements in the network, things like spanning tree, the basics, uh, then uh, layer two port security, um, trying to really implement best practices, and all the while doing that more at the CLI level. But then you start to see that the CLI is nice and all, but you're thinking more of a hop-by-hop -hop approach to the network. I need to touch each and every one of these devices. I need to make sure that every little thing I do on one device, I'm replicating across all of them. And that's where automation really comes in. So now what I'm doing when I'm going out into the networks that, that I help in or even at home, I'm thinking, how do, what do I need to do and how can I automate it? rule of thumb is I'm only going to type something once and then I'm going to try and automate that. So it's not that I'm taking away the, the networking, the actual underlying, say, switching or some of the routing skills. I'm trying to see how can I best implement those in an automated fashion, in a replicable fashion. And that translates more broadly to all tracks within our network engineering realm. We want them to do the same thing. We want them to be that the sharpest network engineer and the, and the, the best expert and we want them to think about how they're doing what they're doing with an automation slant to be able to think, how do I do this at scale and how can I do this more reliably by embracing APIs and embracing automation. Mm -hmm. so, so why are these skills important to employers? Um, what are they looking for in future IT hires? A lot of what uh, automation will lead to with that scale and, and replicability and reliability is a more agile network. And a network that, that adapts more with the business, with the features, with what the customer's customers want. So if I'm a, uh, a, an organization that has my own customers, they're demanding features, they're demanding capabilities of me, of, of their interface into whatever products or applications or services that I'm doing. And chances are these days with mobile apps setting up this, you were on Twitter getting everything set up, those mobile apps, those, those interfaces, they need those features to be lightning quick. They need the network to be able to adapt to that. And doing that step-by-step, device-by-device CLI method is error-prone and can lead to a, a longer time to get that feature live. So employers are looking for people who understand the automation, who can use the APIs to get feature velocity, to help them be differentiated, to help them overtake their competitors in the marketplace um, and do things without downtime, without security issues, to think holistically about the network and apply everything that's needed at a, at a pace that's required to be relevant in this uh, very dynamic uh, digital marketplace. Mm -hmm. Well, five of the new DevNet specialist certifications focus on automation mm -hmm. in specific technology areas, including enterprise, data center, security, service provider, collaboration. Um, we're gonna take a moment and see a video so we can see how those new automation specialist certifications fit into each of our tracks. Sounds good. Software development and infrastructure are coming together like never before. Developers have new opportunities to work with IT infrastructure, and IT engineers can now take advantage of the flexibility of software. That's how today's businesses need to innovate and scale and drive the network forward. Our new Cisco certified DevNet Automation Specialist certifications bring these essential skills together so you can become a next generation specialist in a net DevOps world. Our Automation Specialist certifications focus on five key technology areas. And earning just one DevNet Automation Specialist certification qualifies as your concentration exam toward two professional level certifications. For instance, once you pass the Automating Cisco Enterprise Solutions exam, you earn the Cisco Certified DevNet Specialist Enterprise Automation and Programmability certification. You also satisfy the concentration exam requirement for CCNP Enterprise and Cisco Certified DevNet Professional. 
which means you've got your specialist level certification and you're well on your way to earning two different professional level certifications. And it works the same way for the other technology areas too. The network of the future is being built at this very moment. It's being built by IT engineers and by software developers just like you. So start building your future today with Cisco DevNet Automation Specialist Certifications. So NetDevOps is a buzzword we hear a lot. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what that term means? Sure. Uh, the, the, old, the idea of taking network and network engineering, combining it with this thing that has been out for quite a bit longer, this DevOps mindset, DevOps methodology. You may hear this acronym uh, columns associated with DevOps. It's really, DevOps is, is less about the tooling and less about specific things and more about a, a culture of collaboration, a culture of change, embracing that and enabling that with automation doing things that are at a more rapid pace because automation helps you enable it. So you're able to test new features, new capabilities more rapidly. Um, and you measure, you look and you see what it, what you're doing with the network or what you're doing with whatever within IT, are you having the impact you want? What do I have to go back and refactor um, with the features that I'm coming out with? And you're constantly improving. You're sharing best practices. You're, you're trying to come up with a, a always evolving set of, of teams or, or, or close knit groups working together to not just build out the features, but to implement and then to operate those features. And that's what Net DevOps is trying to do for the network. So so traditionally, we saw, we, we've heard about DevOps and more of a, a, a compute in, in that data center mindset where you're, you're bringing applications to, uh, to production or to market. Um, and then now we want to do the same thing with the network. And that brings forth some, some actual technology or actual paradigm shifts under the covers. For example, you might hear the phrase infrastructure as code, uh, whereby instead of treating the network like a bunch of, of, of CLI-based configurations, you have an abstraction. You have, could be in like YAML files, JSON files, you have some level of abstraction that these are the features and this is the, the configuration or the properties I want about those features. You check those into a, a software uh, version control system like Git, that triggers a, a continuous integration, continuous development pipeline where automation goes and, and builds out the, the necessary configuration, deploys it into a test environment, environment, maybe a virtual environment like our, our viral, our virtual internet routing labs, tests, run some uh, traffic flow tests, make sure that everything works as expected, and if so, only then are those configurations pushed to production, and if not, a flag is raised and you can go back and retool those configurations. So that's one kind of method that could happen or one kind of workflow that can happen as part of this, this uh, paradigm of net DevOps being brought into the network engineers space. Again, you're still deploying, you're still implementing the same capabilities into the network, the same things like QoS, policy changes, route um, protocol configuration changes, security features, but you're doing so at a more abstracted level and you're doing so with automation so you can make sure that everything you do is rapidly tests and you can fail fast and, and not deploy into production if something is wrong. Okay. It's a short job description. <laughs> um, so what kind of job roles or titles do NetDevOps experts have? Well, this is a fairly um, fluid area, and people get creative um, with job titles. Really, you want to double-click and look at the descriptions to see, are, are, you, are you practicing automation? Do they mention things like infrastructure as code? Do they want you to be familiar with Python, with a, a version control system, with uh, frameworks like Ansible or Puppet or Chef or Terraform? Th those are the things that kind of clue you in to how that organization is operating. But some of the roles or some of the job titles 
roles, we have been seeing are a network automation engineer or network automation architect, a site reliability engineer, the SRE um, job description has got a lot of uh, a buzz. You might see it written as a DevOps engineer for the network or a net DevOps engineer. It, it really depends on what that organization wants to uh, wants to call it, but really it's, it's the value. You look at that description and you see, what is it that they want me to be familiar with? What are those skills and, and, and those tools and those, those methodologies? And that really clues you in to say, yep, this is someone who's going to be doing things with the network, but doing them using more of this automation as opposed to a more traditional CLI approach. Right. So we hear a lot about network scalability. How do net DevOps skills make network engineers more valuable? It, it goes back a little to the um, uh, to this, uh, idea that automation enables a more rapid, rapidly changing network, which uh, leads to features being rolled out more quickly, which leads to maybe more profitability because you're able to catch those trends uh, with your users, with, with your customers' customers. So those engineers who can really excel and have those skills and can come in and contribute to a team or maybe lead a team and help design the, the automation architecture for an organization, enable the network to not just be a series of, of pipes, but to be a, a living, breathing, contributing thing to the business or the organization and adapt the, the network, uh, the, the kind of the generic network features with the specific needs of the organization and enable new features and enable them much more quickly um, with all of this automation. It sounds really exciting. It, I love it. Personally, yeah. I, I try to live this stuff. Um, I, I'm, I am very excited about it. And I, I love it when I'm able to automate something or when I'm able to take something that was very CLI or manually driven and automated. I feel kind of like Dirty Harry. Like, yeah, I did. <laughs> Well, can you walk us through a day in the life of what a net DevOps engineer has? Sure. Um, so just as, a, 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 as an example, you might, instead of come into a, a network and, uh, like I mentioned, configure things and SSH to a device and, and make some changes, it might be more about thinking about what is it that I have to, what, what does the business need me to do today? Or it might be more tactical. I need to bring online a new uh, branch office. And instead of um, having someone go out, deliver the router switch or whatever, rack it into or, or situate it wherever it needs, have it boot up and, and maybe I have them copy and paste something into the console or I go out there and copy and paste it into the console, you think about how do I bootstrap these devices? What automation can I use? Um, so maybe it's about I'm going to have uh, in a Cisco environment, something maybe like Cisco DNA Center will act as the plug and play server that will bootstrap these devices automatically. So when they come online, someone just powers them up, they boot up, they get their config, um, they call home, and we're able to, to configure them all manually without uh, a lot of, of direct human, potentially error prone human interaction. So it's, it's thinking about the things that I would typically do in the network and then think about how I might do them more automated. It it could be the same thing with a configuration change. We need to add a new policy uh, into the network. Well, instead of going and touching 50, 100 or so devices to do that, how do I make sure that the infrastructure is in place, that I can just go and make that change once, or uh, like that infrastructure is code, maybe change a few properties and push that through so it's automatically tested. Uh, upon success, then it's automatically deployed and deployed to all the devices that it needs to be touched. So that's kind of what you might be experiencing, both from more of a design and even more a tactical level every day. Interesting. So can you walk us through the process of getting started in NetDevOps? A lot of times, many people on, on, on this session, certainly myself, you're not always presented with a clean slate where you can say, you know what, I'm going to automate from the from, from the beginning. You're in a network that's rather mixed, it's got some history to it, um, and you have to find, you have to pick your battles. What am I gonna do first? What, what could I potentially automate first? Sometimes, sadly, that's precipitated by a disaster. As an example, I, you mentioned I work with the IETF, uh, Internet Engineering Task Force. I 
co-chair a working group and I do some real IETF type stuff. But I also help out with their conference network. Every time we go, three times a year, we go to different places, we set up a conference, we set up a network to support it. A few years ago, and th these are the geekiest of geeks, by the way. I mean, the, the people in this NOC, Network Operations Center at the IETF, are some of the, the men and women who have been with the internet since the very beginning. They are brilliant people. But they're also, this is not their day job, they're volunteers here. So we were in Prague a few years ago, and we had been doing things like we'd always been doing, not very automated, mind you, surprising as it might seem, and everything just melted down. Right at the end of the conference, we lost our core switch. Um, we were like chickens with our heads cut off, just running around, trying different things, all jumping in. And we decided, wow, we've got to make a change. It was a disaster, we've got to make a change. We sat down at a off-site, so to speak, and we, we really thought about how we're going to do things and, and be realistic. This isn't our day job. We have other responsibilities, but what can we do that's more, that, that brings more automation? And, and first of all, from an organization, from a culture standpoint, going back to the columns thing, we made sure that we had representation. We had a leader at each part of the network, and we had backups. Not to say that they're the only people doing things, but they're the kind of point person. So we, we changed some of the cultural paradigms. We looked at what we could automate. We introduced a, a homegrown bootstrap solution for all of the switches. Um, we moved from autonomous APs to controller-based, which by default added some automation. Um, and we started to see what we could templatize with our router configurations using Ansible and Jinja. Um, small things at first. And we've over time built out more of that. So we were very successful going into our next conference. I think it was London, I don't remember exactly. We were successful in making those changes. The cultural shift by certainly helped. And we've gone further with the automation to start automating more of the network management, the configuration of the network management applications. So it was picking where we could do things, small things that would make a, a, a contribution, a valuable addition to the network, and then evolving from there, all the while knowing that without a cultural change, without a conscious decision that this is how we wanted to do things, it wouldn't go further. So that that really was kind of our first, second, and now we're, we're at a, a clip where every conference we're doing one more thing, we're automating one more thing, we're making one more improvement um, so that we can really have a, a, a nice, well-run network uh, for the week that we're, uh, we're there. So you, utilizing the Cisco certification mm -hmm. portfolio, what, what path would people travel down who might be interested in pursuing that? Sure. Ops? So I, I think everyone, certainly I'm seeing this slide. Um, <laughs> Certification is an important way of saying, of, of asserting that these are the skills that I've had. It's, it, it, it kind of opens the door that allows you to go and, and, and gain that experience, to say, this is what I can do. Let me gain that experience with your organization. And on the net DevOps path, we have, because of our new flexible certification style, we have a few things that can help assert that you are that individual. Uh, you can start out in the network engineering uh, realm if you want and look at the enterprise technology core exam and the training behind that and, mm -hmm. and the skills you're going to learn there. Go into the, because that, that's going to ground you in the fundamentals and foundation of enterprise networking, of controller uh, paradigms, of certainly the routing and the switching that goes into an enterprise network. And then go into the concentration for automating and programming those solutions. Because you're going to take those same routing and switching, the same devices you've been working with, the same controllers, the SD-WAN, Meraki, DNA Center, that type of thing, and you're going to see how you can use the APIs to automate all of the, the features, the capabilities, the troubleshooting you've been doing. So that kind of gives you a, a great foundation around enterprise, around automating the enterprise. And then you could take it a step further by wrapping in the skills from the, the DevNet DevOps concentration. That's going to take you into really using a version control system like Git with a CI CD pipeline infrastructure in GitLab CE. It's going to show you how to make use of infrastructure as code, how to make use of containers as you build out applications, maybe 
applications to support your network automation, how to use frameworks like Ansible to do some of that automation and Terraform to do things at the compute and the, the data center level. And that's going to round you out in that net DevOps space. And then now you have, you assert that you have those skills and you can start to, you should be practicing that um, and developing that experience that really, really makes you a valuable net DevOps uh, engineer and asset to your organization. Right. Well, I want to reel it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most popular exams that we've seen so far is the Cisco DevNet Associate exam. Um, so once you pass that exam, can you tell us what kind of job roles those people would be qualified for? Again, the, the, the job roles, the titles at least, are a little bit um, malleable. Companies mm -hmm. like to get uh, creative with them. Um, but generally what we're looking at for the, the CCNA and for the DevNet um, Associate is uh, associate level or junior level. Uh, for the CCNA, it could be a junior level network engineer, a junior level uh, a dev tech, or sorry, network test engineer. Uh, for the DevNet associate, same type of thing. You're a one, maybe one and a half years on a software development team, so you could be a, a junior um, a software engineer, a junior dev test engineer, a junior DevOps engineer, or net DevOps engineer. Uh, that is working on that team, building or helping to build out those applications, making use of um, uh, version control systems and continuous, uh, continuous integration pipelines. And just like I mentioned with the CCNA, you could be that person who's helping to um, validate configurations or helping to deploy uh, changes in the network, but not necessarily maybe building out the, the design behind those changes. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for those who are hearing about net DevOps for the first time or who want to make it a higher priority? How can they start building net DevOps skills into their skill set? One thing I always like to encourage people to do, because uh, you mentioned I speak at Cisco Live, and, and when I talk, uh, when I do a technical session there, um, I, I people in the room, they're likely interested in the topic, hopefully. Um, same thing here, people um, on our various uh, channels are probably interested in the topic. Um, look and see what it is that within here, within some of the links we're gonna share with you, um, within the training that you might be going and taking, and say, what is one thing, when, what is the first thing, so maybe something small that I can take away from this and go back and do? What, what is the thing that, that is going to get me started, the catalyst that's going to get me moving forward, the thing that's going to have me have a win and going to, to snowball into more and bigger wins? Um, and, and find that and go and do it. Take it. Maybe it's something small. Maybe it's I'm just going to automate a, uh, a user addition and deletion in, in my, my identity management system. That, something, or, or maybe it's I'm just going to automate the deployment of banners in my network, something small. Pick that and, and start to see how automation can work, what you can build around that to be successful, to get a win, to, to find something that's maybe annoying, that's bothering you, that you can, you can automate and make it just kind of, it goes away, it becomes something that, that you, you don't have to worry about as much. Um, and that's the, the, the practical takeaway. The other things are, if, if it does interest you and, and you're really new to this, the training that we offer um, in support of these certifications, as I mentioned, the, the training around the, the, the new CCNA, the training around the DevNet Associate, or what we have here, the Enterprise Core, the uh, DevOps concentration, the Enterprise Automation concentration, that training is available, you can go and start to take that. There are labs built into all of this, so you can start to play with what you're learning in a safe um, environment, lab environment, and again, find that thing that says, wow, this is cool, I'm going to go and try this in my environment, I'm going to go and see how this can improve my day to day. Um, and that can get that excitement going that just keeps you at it and keeps you learning and growing more. Well, speaking of excitement, we have a lot of questions coming in. Cool. So we're going to pop in there, see what people and want to know about. we go. Okay, Greg on YouTube. Hi, Greg. How do I even get started on my CCNA? How do you even get started on your CCNA? So there are there is uh, a training course um, at uh, uh, learningnetworkstore.cisco.com um, on the, the new CCNA. The, the, this, again, will have labs, will have um, introductory modules that walk you through zero all the way up to being able to start uh, additional practice to prepare for your exam. 
We also have a Cisco Press, a Cisco Press book around the new um, Cisco Certified Network Associate um, certification that you can read uh, and start to, to prep. And we, we I mentioned the, this viral um, piece of software, Virtual Internet Routing Labs. Uh, viral is something that you can also uh, purchase as a subscription and download. This gives you a, a virtual lab environment whereby you can build your own small network topologies and test out things. So maybe you go through the training, maybe you read the book, and you want to practice more. Viral could be a way, again, in a safe environment, a lab environment. You don't need any additional hardware uh, to test out some of those concepts and those skills and make sure you've got a good handle on them. Um, before going for the actual exam itself. Thank you. Okay, um, Jer on LinkedIn. Hi, Jer. Hi, Jer. Um, what number of engineers do you think are currently certified in DevNet certifications? What number of engineers are currently certified? I honestly don't have the number off the top of my head. I will say that we uh, did a really good job of marketing um, the, the value that we wanted out of the DevNet certifications, why people should be interested. We put forth this program called the DevNet 500. It was announced at Cisco Live Europe in Barcelona in March now, a couple months back. Um, and that has driven a lot of interest. And I know from my social media friends here that we have a lot of people, as when March 24th hit, there were literally people looking to see what is the furthest east they could go to get into the testing center that opened the earliest so they could be the first to test to make sure they were in the DevNet 500. I don't know if we've closed the 500 yet. We've got to be close at this point. But we do see a lot of interest not just in the DevNet certifications, but uh, across the board in all our new certifications. Uh, as soon as those gates opened on the 24th, uh, I was actually on vacation, but I remember hearing, hey, it's open in um, New Caledonia or uh, New Zealand. Did you get really close to the international date line? People are doing that. People... And so it's, it's, it, there was a lot of excitement, and we're still seeing that trend. It was actually more than we thought, so we're really excited about how that's worked out. Definitely. I, I personally love the enthusiasm that I see on social media. So if you're going for a certification exam, if you're studying, let us know. We're all ears. Yep, they are. Okay. Um, from Toyin on YouTube. Toyin. When will the CCNP certifications in enterprise and security be updated on Network Academy? On Network Academy, CCNP certifications. On, I'm not certain. I'm sure, though, that... We could probably find some of that information out and post back to uh, these various uh, outlets, these channels later on. I don't have that date off the top of my head, though. Harrigan on YouTube. Do Hi, employee, Sure. Do employees of support companies get any kind of discount on certification exams? Do employees of support companies get... I don't... There are... Um, uh, there are ways of, of getting, um, of purchasing access to exams using our learning credits. There's always, not being the salesperson, uh, I'm not sure what might be uh, available for a given organization or, or what uh, deals might be set up through uh, Pearson View, who actually does the, the administration of the test. Um, I, I would have to say contact uh, um, your Cisco salesperson or, or, or look at uh, what um, your, in, um, your account manager might be able to, to do. Um, I, I couldn't give you a more uh, definitive answer, unfortunately. Well, I love the next question. Mm -hmm. Can you share where we can find some videos and student guides. This is from Shushant on YouTube. Ah, Shushant, hey, can you share where we can find some videos and student guides? So, haha, <laughs> there are a lot of places you can go and find um, various resources uh, on all the new certifications, specifically with DevNet. If you go to uh, developer.cisco.com, or I think the, the video we watched said uh, cisco.com slash go slash DevNet, likely wind up in the same place. Excuse me. There's a, a slash certification link off of that. Uh, all of the blueprints or the exam topics that we have. Uh, DevNet has a lot of uh, learning labs, a lot of free content, um, 
training material that they uh, offer, and they've lined those points up to the various elements of the blueprint uh, or exam topics, so you can start to walk through that right now for the various DevNet certifications. There's also uh, cisco.com slash next level, and next level is all one word, um, where you can go and find, again, more uh, information, uh, pointers to study guides, uh, for all of the exams, not just the DevNet exams, but all of the, the network engineering exams as well. And there's also links there to study groups uh, at our uh, community site. I was uh, um, helping out with one of the CCNA study groups a little while ago, and there are some great people, not just Cisco people, but great external contributors there that can help you uh, get prepared for uh, whatever exam, whatever, depending on the study group, whatever exam you might be going for. Uh, so a lot of uh, good ways of getting started and finding resources that can help you out. Thank you. Okay, Felipe on LinkedIn. So, CCNA got more modules? More modules. Oh, hey, Felipe. I'm not sure what you mean by more modules. I will say that the exam is completely changed. If you, if you go to that next level, cisco.com slash next level, and you find the CCNA exam topics link, um, and you walk through the, the various domains, the, the, the high level uh, one, two, three, four type uh, sections of what's on the exam, you can see what's there. I wouldn't say that it got more. I mean, it, it, it got wireless, like I mentioned, security and um, uh, fundamentals around automation and programmability, but we pulled some things out, uh, and we did not take all 10 of the CCNAs that we had and try to cram them into one unified exam. This is a brand new product that um, fits the uh, what we've heard from many of our stakeholders inside and outside, fits the model of what they want that associate level engineer to be. So uh, I, in terms of actual quantity, I'm not sure if it's more or less. I can say that it has changed, but there still is, um, from a, from a net core networking standpoint, uh, a focus, a definite focus paid on that core networking skill set. This next question is mm -hmm. a really good one too. From Damon on Facebook. Hey, Damon. I was hoping to pre I was hoping to prepare to take the SCORE exam mm -hmm. at Cisco Live. Okay. This this year, but the book won't be available until May. Any advice? So yes, the security core uh, exam. Security is a hot topic, so good luck, uh, Damon, with that. Um, the course for the security core, the uh, online course, is currently available, um, and we have the ability of also, you could schedule um, uh, instructor-led versions of that as well. So that could be a, a way of getting started um, there, uh, there, there also could be, you could start some uh, discussion on our communities if you want to get any specific uh, hints from other uh, security-minded people of, of things you might try to, um, to, to do to get prepared ahead of time. Um, but certainly looking at the blueprint would be, or the exam topics, would be a good way to start and see where you think you might need um, additional uh, focus or additional practice and, and start to look for or, or use things to some extent you can with viral from the security standpoint, but start to uh, experiment with that. And like I said, if you wanted to go for the full course, um, you can do that. And that will offer you labs, uh, learning modules around all elements of those exam topics for Security Core. Josh on Facebook, I already have my Cisco Enterprise Core. What is what is the best specialty exam for me to take to get my CCMP Enterprise certification? Well, Josh, that, uh, I would need to know you a little bit more and understand what you're doing. Um, I could tell you for me, so I, I just got my DevNet Associate. Um, I, I went for it um, because I thought, eh, it's, it's, I, I really enjoyed the test. Um, I'm going for my enterprise um, automation, so the, the concentration you see up there. That's my passion. I really do like the automation and programmability, and my area of focus has been more on the enterprise side. So uh, the thing I do in the IETF is more around NetConf and RestConf, um, and I've been focused on our iOS XE platform. So for me, I would say that, but that's not you, your, your own self, you're Josh. 
um, I would say, what are you doing now? And, and look at the concentrations that we have available. Maybe you're more of a hardcore infrastructure person uh, around routing, switching, QoS, that type of thing, and the, the advanced infrastructure concentration is, is more your speed. Or maybe you're doing a lot with wireless, so wireless deployment or design, and there are some concentrations in that area as well. So I would say, um, what is it that you feel that's either your passion uh, or what you're doing or what you would like to do um, and, and go and pursue that particular concentration. But for me, like I said, I'm, I'm the automation guy. So that's, that's where my, uh, my next step is going to be. Well, I, I'm really glad that Anthony on YouTube asked this question here. If I'm currently studying for CCNA, what do you recommend? Keeping on track for CCNA or starting on track to DevNet? Again, uh, hi, Anthony. I... I don't know your specific story, but I would say stay where you're at. Stay, stay the course right now. You're going to get some familiarity around software as part of the CCNA. And then if, if, that, if, if that wetted your whistle and you're like, yeah, I want to know more about that, um, you can go for your, uh, your DevNet associate as well. The, the idea with these concentrations at the professional level, just to give everyone a little bit of insight here, uh, you saw it in the video. But we are saying that if you go for an automation concentration um, in the network engineering space, that also counts towards your DevNet professional. We want people to explore both sides of the coin, the, the network engineering side and the software development side. Um, it's not necessarily that one is better than the other. And certainly having a broader perspective might be very helpful to you. So, Anthony, I would say stay where you, stay on course for your CCNA. You've already started down that path. You're going to get some of that software uh, um, familiarity as part of what's in the new CCNA. And then decide, is that where you want, you want more focus? You want more uh, background on that? Even if you grow with just in the network engineering realm, you're going to get more software exposure. Regardless, we're, we're, even if you don't take the automation concentration, you're going to see more software in the technology cores uh, to some extent in those other concentrations. So decide, is that the level you want to be at or you want more of that software exposure? And then you can decide how you want to play in, in the network engineering realm and in the software developer realm. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that will be a nice segue into this next question we just got from Alan on LinkedIn. Do we, need C do we need CCNA Foundation to move into DevNet search? No, you do not, uh, Alan. Um, and that's, we really designed the DevNet um, realm of certifications to be more focused at that software developer who might not have a lot of uh, network uh, uh, exposure, but they're, they're working more on the network now. When you go and you look at the, the topics of the DevNet associate, as an example, you'll see one domain or excuse me, one section of the exam focused on network fundamentals. This is things like, do you understand uh, network addressing? Do you understand the roles of various elements in the network? Do you understand some of the basic properties around routing and switching? Um, we want them to know that, but we don't want to go in so much detail that it scares off the software developer. Because what, you, what you'll typically find in these Net DevOps teams, it's not necessarily one person is, is on that Net DevOps pedestal. But what you'll find in these teams are people People with varying degrees of skill in the network, varying degrees of skill in software, and it's the, the collaboration of those teams that helps make everything um, flow and work very well. So it, it, it really depends on, on what you want to do. You don't need, however, a CCNA to get a DevOps, uh, sorry, to get a DevNet Associate certified, and vice versa. You don't need to be DevNet Associate certified to be able to get a, a CCNA. So this next question, I, I get a kick out of it. Okay. I'm curious what your answer will be. Oh, good. Can an art graduate do CCIE security, do a CCIE security certification course, sit for the exam, and get the certification for CCIE security? Oh my God, I gotta read this. <laughs> okay, uh, Sartek, okay. Can an art graduate, uh, I'll say graduate, do CCIE security certification course, okay, and sit for exam? So, first of all, art graduate, or some non-IT graduate. When I started in TAC at Cisco, we had one guy on a team that was a chiropractor. We've had guys on teams that um, came from janitorial services. 
it's whatever their mind says, I like this, I want to do this. You don't need a call. You just, there are people who just eat networking technology up. They love it. They have a passion for it. I, graduation doesn't make any, in my opinion, if, if this is your passion, if you want to do this, if this is how your mind works, you're going to be successful. You're going to have that energy, that drive, you're gonna do it. So graduation or what, what you studied. Uh, I started out in biochemistry and molecular genetics. Um, we, you, can, you can do the network if that's your passion. Now, can you sit for the course and then go take the exam? Probably not, not, not immediately. The courses for any of our exams, they prepare you to take the exam, but they don't give you the exam. We really want you to take what you learn from the courses and go back and practice that more. It doesn't necessarily have to be in production. You can go back and practice in, in lab environments, things like viral, like I mentioned. But go back and practice. Gain experience. Gain more true comfort with the material. Really internalize it. Um, you're going to be faced with different scenarios, with slightly different ways of asking questions, and things that are really trying to drive to make sure you know the practical, especially at the inter internet e expert level. Do you really know these concepts? Can you really think on your feet to be able to uh, configure, optimize, implement, and now even design some of these things? So the courses will get you on the, on the path, um, but, but we really need you to have more of that experience and exposure to be successful at the exam. So I'm looking at, at Harrigan's question here from YouTube, and I think I think a lot of our viewers might be feeling this way. Um, how do I step from field tech that does local updates and troubleshooting routers at stores to an office doing the cool stuff like security or DevOps? Oftentimes, uh, this is actually a really interesting question because it goes back a little to the previous um, and, and what your previous job experience is. And, and um, I, I, I'll give you another anecdotal example. Uh, I was doing a presentation at Cisco Live on embedded automation. I've been doing this, I have been doing this for many years. One time, a, a person came up to me afterwards um, and said uh, he attended my course a few years, a couple years ago, and he um, took back the printed slides. This is back when we were printing slides, um, to a colleague at work who was kind of on the bubble for being let go. Um, and that guy wasn't doing automation, but looked through the slides and said, huh, this is interesting. I bet I can use this to go and fix this nagging thing that's been bothering uh, me in the network. Did it and kind of got a reputation for being the automation person. And from there, he's career drastically changed and he really found that it was something that, that made him excited in what he did and is he's got a new lease on his career. Um, same thing with the, the field engineer. Oftentimes it takes an opportunity and the field engineer has a, a, an interesting perspective in some of the actual deployment challenges that can occur when they're going out and having to rack and stack and get a new device online and they might bring with it that perspective and come and say you know what if we did things this way or that way or if we had a way instead of me having to console in with my laptop if we could bootstrap this a little bit differently. Um, it, it's oftentimes just being given, first the person wants to, they want to say, I think we could do this better or differently. And then given that opportunity to help with that, uh, maybe to participate on a team that builds out a, a part of that solution on that net DevOps team is kind of that customer voice um, that gives that insight. That can then evolve into them taking a more active role on that team in building out the next solution. So it, it, it's going to take a little bit of a cultural shift, obviously, to bring someone who may not be directly involved in that aspect of the work into that aspect of the work. And then they're going to have to want to step up and be a contributor there as well. OK. Um, Paul on LinkedIn, do you see in the future that network automation engineers will replace traditional network engineers? Uh, Paul, hey. I don't think we're, I, I don't think it has to be one or the other. I, my belief, um, and certainly what we're trying to do with our new certifications in the network engineering realm, is say that a network engineer today has to have that automation and software familiarity. 
Um, they have to be able to speak in those languages and those terms, whether th they may work with others who are more advanced in that area, where they may be more advanced in the, uh, in the protocol and the implementation of the protocol area, um, but they have to be able to work together. So I think that what you're going to see are network engineers that are more familiar with software. I I'll give you another I example. Uh, would you say that... that um, uh, f the, in the wireless space that controller engineers replaced uh, autonomous AP engineers. It was more of an evolution of what it took to, to manage or to implement a, a, a scalable wireless network. The, the autonomous thing just wasn't cutting it and the controller paradigm just won out. So a wireless engineer today now deals with the controller, which is more software um, focus, maybe more of a UI than, than what it used to be, telnetting or SSHing into individual APs to configure them. Um, so I, I think it's a similar way. We just, we naturally absorb new skills, new capabilities as we grow within the network engineering uh, job. And I, I, I think that this is, my belief is this is what we're going to see. Not that, that if, if the today's network engineer doesn't embrace more of the software, I think that could could hold them back. But if they are embracing it, they don't know, maybe their title changes, I don't know, or maybe just the assumption is that network engineer is going to be able to do more of these things. If that, hopefully that gets it, to it. It was a tough question. It was a good question. It was a good question. But uh, I'm sorry, that's all the time we have oh. for today. Thanks for the questions. And I want to thank you, thank Joe, you. For, for your time and for such an interesting discussion, as always. My pleasure. Um, and to everyone watching, thanks for tuning in. Um, to learn more about how you can take your career to the next level, visit cisco.com slash go slash next level. That includes information about the new training and certification program that just went live last week. Also, you can visit the Cisco Learning Network and DevNet and more. Um, visit us on social media and connect with us. Speaking of, as we continue to celebrate our recent program updates, keep an eye out for some exciting opportunities to kickstart your CCMP Enterprise and DevNet Associate cool. certifications. So for more information, make sure you're following Cisco DevNet and learning at Cisco on social media everywhere. And you can view the comments from today using the Cisco chat hashtag. I wanted to thank everyone again for watching, and we'll thank see you, you next time. Bye, everyone.